Hello, I'm Dan Dirky Ben Elliott, and in this video we'll be seeing how we can take a point on the screen, which will be from the player's viewpoint, and find out where it intersects with geometry in the world. When we hit play, we can see that when the character fires, projectile balls come out of the gun and interact with the world. I'm going to modify this character so that instead of firing balls, which are actual objects in the world, we'll fire an imaginary projectile and affect a material that the projectile would hit. While we create this effect, let's keep it simple and use a single piece of geometry as the item we'll hit. Go to the Modes panel and let's create a plane. Drag it into the world and let's rotate it so that it's facing the player as the game starts by moving it up and rotating it 90 degrees. And I'll also scale it up so it's a bit easier to hit. So now, when we hit play, it's already in our field of view to make testing easier. And to make it even more simple to get going, we're going to leverage the existing logic that resides in the character blueprint. There are already controls set up that we can hook into. So select the character, and in the outliner, next to where it's highlighted, click the Edit Blueprint option. Let's take a look at this lower section, because this is where the input fire event is called when the fire button is clicked by the mouse or controller. We can see that the input fire event then goes on to execute the montage play node, which triggers the weapon animation, and then after that, the ball projectile is spawned into the world before the sound of the weapon is played. We're going to disconnect the pin after the montage play, because we don't want to spawn the projectile. So after the weapon animation is triggered, we'll pull out a pin and create a line trace for objects node. This is what's going to allow us to detect what geometry the weapon is pointing at. It does this by being provided a start and end position in the world, which the game physics system will use to check to see if there's any objects between those two positions. We can also tell the physics system which type of objects we want to check for by limiting it to a list. Let's go and create that list of object types that we want to check for. Start with the pin and drag it out to create a new node and choose the make array node. And doing it this way will create the node with the right type of array for the thing that it's connected to. And this makes it easy to choose between a predefined set of object types. The default option of world static is one that we want as that includes all static meshes in the world. And we can add more by clicking the add pin button which is this cross here. We'll also pick World Dynamic, which is any moving meshes that are driven by animation or code. And the last one we want is any physics body, which is any mesh which is being driven by the physics system itself, such as rigid bodies. Now let's figure out where we should start this line trace. We want to find a place in the world beginning from where this crosshair in the center of the screen is. To start, we'll use a blueprint node which returns the size of the viewport in pixels, which obviously will vary depending on the resolution it's rendered at. From here, we can take the returned value, which is a 2D vector, and right click and choose Split Struct Pin to turn the output into two separate floats. Let's take the X value, which is the width of the viewport, and divide it by two to get the center in terms of how many pixels from the left the center of the screen is and we'll copy that node and connect up the Y value to do the same for the vertical offset. Let's right click and create a Make Vector 2D node. And this will allow us to combine the two new halved center values back into a single vector. We can take this center pixel offset and feed it into a node called the Deproject Screen to World node, which takes the screen position and returns the world position at that pixel right at the player's viewpoint. We'll need to provide it with a player that we want to get the position from, but that's easy as we can just drag a pin and choose the Get Player Controller node. We can connect this now to the Line Trace node. Now, we want to find out where to end the trace, and that now is also easy as we have this World Direction value, which is a vector that points out from the player's viewpoint in the direction away from the screen. Because it's a unit vector, which is a vector of length one, we need to multiply up by a floating point value to scale the vector 
to bring it to a distance that we want to end the trace in the world. Some large number should extend the trace out far enough for the area that we're interested in, which is just the player's vicinity. Hook it up to the end position in the line trace node, and to verify that this is working, we can print a value to the screen during play, and we'll simply use the true or false value that the line trace returns as a way to see if there was any mesh detected from the trace. We're getting this annoying lighting rebuild warning, so I'm going to switch to dynamic lighting so that we don't see that. Now when we hit play and try to hit a mesh, you can see that it's returning true, whereas if we try and hit the sky, we get false printed to indicate that no meshes were hit in the range given. So again, true for the near objects and false for the sky. We don't need the print string anymore, but let's see what more information we can get out of this hit by pulling out the out hit value and choosing the break hit result node. This splits out the hit result into all of its individual data members. And what I want now is to check not that we just hit something, but where it hit. We can drag a pin from the location result and create a draw debug sphere. And the center of the sphere is already connected up to the location result for us. So let's hook up the execution pin to trigger this sphere node. And I'll give the sphere a lifetime of half a second and a thickness of one. Let's hit play. And when we fire, it's actually a bit hard to see. So I'll quickly change the values here to make it a bit clearer. I'll make the sphere a bit smaller at 32 units. And for the color, I'll make it a lovely bright pink. That's clear to see now. But you'll notice that it's offset from the crosshair. And that's because the crosshair, which is drawn as part of the game's heads up display, is drawn a bit off center. We can find out how much it's offset by going to the first person BP folder. And in the blueprints folder there, we find the first person HUD class, which is responsible for drawing the display items. If we double click to open its editor, we can see that the screen position is used and the crosshair has been offset by 20 pixels in the vertical direction. And also, the crosshair is sized to 16 by 16 pixels. Since the picture is drawn from its top left corner and starts at this offset, we'll need to go 8 pixels right and down from the screen center to end up in the center of the crosshair. So let's go back to our character blueprint. And now you can see why we split out the original screen offsets into two separate values, because we can offset them individually. I'll create a float plus float node and add eight pixels to the horizontal position. And I'll try 24 for the vertical. And that's not enough. So I'll choose 26 probably should be 20 pixels plus 8, but that seems good enough as it's drawing pretty much center. Let's take this whole line trace section and we'll comment it a line trace from camera. And we also don't need to draw the debug sphere anymore. So in the next video, we'll use this hit detection to trigger a drawing of a render target. So I'll see you then.